What is up, my fellow Chibits? Today, I'm going to be bringing you all a Tokyo Ghoul, Ghoul Biology 101 video. As the title says, I want to be diving into the biology of ghouls and what they are, where they came from, talking about Eto and what she is, along with why ghouls can drink coffee. So, this is a video I've actually wanted to make for quite a long time now because there's been many Chibits that have asked me over many weeks or months now about, like, why can ghouls drink coffee or is ghouls really evolved humans? And so, to save time for many Chibits that are new to watching my reviews of Tokyo Ghoul, to save time, I want to kind of put all this information on ghoul biology in one video and discuss the main crucial points from what we know so far. Now, I'm going to be discussing the evidence we have gotten throughout the series, and I'm just going to be bringing it up, and if you have something to add as well, please do so in the comments. From what we know, ghouls are a creature or a being that looks human-like, and ghouls, they have to eat humans to survive, but apparently they can also drink coffee, which has been one of the biggest mysteries of Tokyo Ghoul since the very beginning because there's been many reasons or many theories about why can ghouls drink coffee, but there's never been anything that's really gave concrete information of why they could. But before I get into the coffee fact, let's talk about some of the other things we do kind of already know about. So ghouls, as we know, since they have a human appearance and they have to feast on humans, it's not really that they have to feast on humans, it's actually they need the RC cells inside of the human body. So if there was a way for CCG or anyone side scientists or something to extract RC cells into some form of substance, maybe, you know, take a shot out of a regular human, get the blood out of it, and then give it to a ghoul, maybe there could be an effective way for ghouls not to always have to hunt after humans and kill them. It could be a way or a vaccine to be able to stop ghouls and humans from trying to kill each other, but that's for a completely entirely different video. For now, though, as we know, ghouls need RC cells in general. It's not that they need to eat human meat, they need the stuff that's inside of the human being. Now the question is, what is RC cells? From what we know, RC cells is a supernatural element to Tokyo Ghoul. It's a new cell that has been introduced into this core series, or the verse, and we don't really know its exact origin. From what information we do know though, the cell looks like an infant child, and also the name of the cell is called Red Child cells. So that is the name we got, and the structure of this cell, like I said, it looks like a infant child, like a baby human child, which is very creepy, and that, that there's so many ways or many reasons I could talk about that in general for a long time, but I want to save that for now. So, red child cells, as we know, that is what they look like, and that is kind of what they're about. We don't really know the origin, but we do know that they're a, like, supernatural part of the Tokyo Ghoul verse. So, since ghouls need to feast on this, the question is, why? Why does ghouls hunger after RC cells? Actually, there is a very obvious answer to this. I made a theory a long time ago, talking about how we found out that the kakuho that's inside of ghouls, this organ that stores RC cells, and how it produces the cogene that comes out the tentacle-like structure, as we know, it needs RC cells to make a cogene, and the kakuho stores RC cells. Well, the Kakuho is actually a human defense system that humans' biology made over time. Now, you're probably thinking like, whoa, 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 I thought we were talking about ghouls. I thought we were not talking about humans. Well, here's the thing. Humans are actually ghouls because there's a lot of evidence to support this with humans being ghouls. For one... As we know, in the human body, when something is getting affected, like let's say many humans are getting affected, humans tend to try to evolve past this. It's actually in evolution. The creatures tend to try to evolve past something that affects them in their environment. And let's just say RC cells are what was affecting humans. Because as we know very recently in Tokyo Ghoul Re, there was a disease that was introduced called ROS. Now, this ROS disease is red cell oversaturation. So, there's like too many RC cells inside of the human body, which causes it to where the human gets these weird, like, cogene like structures coming out of different parts of their body, which the, the example we saw was a cogene coming out of this girl's face. And it started off as a pimple, but turned into a giant ass cogene like structure coming out of the face, which is very weird because, as we know, cogenes are supposed to come from a kakuho. But here is the next point to discuss. So, the human body made a defense system 
the Kakuho, an uh, actual organ that's also new to the Tokyo Ghoul verse. It's an organ that also could be considered a supernatural element, but it does make sense because the human body has been shown to be able to evolve over time, over periods of thousands of years. Now, you're probably thinking like, whoa, 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 so you're saying that, that humans evolved into what they are now, ghouls. Yes, that's what I'm trying to point out here because... The Kakuho is actually a human defense system that fights off ROS. ROS, which causes this cancer-like stuff that you can consider like, you know, ghoul cancer. You get this cogony, comes out, and then you die, and it makes it to where your brain and everything kind of shuts down, and let's just say your brain dead. That, that's the best way to kind of put it. So, now knowing that humans develop this defense mechanism, which is a Kakuho, and it stores RC cells for the ROS disease doesn't happen, let's look at other known factors as well. So, exactly why or how did this happen? Well, from what I can theorize, as we know, ghouls have been around for hundreds of years, because we've already seen a flashback with the Washu clan and how they have been fighting ghouls for a very long time, at the very least 200 to 300 plus years, but we know it's probably been a lot longer than that. But the next thing we need to look at, too, is what is the purpose of these RC cells? Well, my theory is, is that RC cells are actually a parasite. RC cells have somehow got into the human body and eventually because of this disease which RC cells cause, ROS, the human body found a way to kind of counteract this disease which eventually turned into the Kakuho and stored this disease inside of that organ where the human wouldn't die because we do know natural human beings also have RC levels. They, they also have RC cells and RC levels attached to them. So humans are just like ghouls when it comes to that regard. Now, the difference between, the only difference that we know of between a ghoul and a human is the Kakuho, the Kogane-like structure, and how the body of ghouls cannot be pierced by regular objects. For instance, like steel or something, like a knife. If you were to try to stab yourself, the knife would bend on your skin. Now, the next thing we need to look into is how these RC cells have affected the human body over time. My theory on the RC cells being parasites is that since the RC cells entered the human body, I think it changed the genetic makeup of a human being, or at the very least has altered the brain in some way to where they've changed the pattern of humans of what they want to eat. Because there is a lot of articles about parasites entering animals, for instance, like an ant. The perfect example is this ant, or the caterpillar fungus, which has been very recently, that's happened in Tokyo Ghoul with Psycho. And as we know, Ashita loves using fungus or parasites and stuff. He's done that quite a bit. And thinking about it like this, we do know that there is animals or bugs, insects and stuff out there that have parasites enter them and turns these bugs or creatures into a puppet and changes their mind or their chemistry to where they will only go after one thing or changes what they will do with their normal instincts. For instance, let's say your instincts was to get up every morning, go grab some food, and then watch some TV. Well, with a parasite entering, you know, into your mind, it would change it to where you get up in the morning, you go outside, you go run, and then you go back to sleep. And it, like, changes the rhythm of your pattern, which I, I don't think it would be exactly like that. But that's just, you know, I kind of just a reference point to what I'm trying to mean. So what this means is, is that I feel like the RC cells changed what humans like to eat in general. The enzyme or RC cells somehow messed with the chemicals in the human brain to where it forced it to where humans want to eat a certain thing, which is RC cells. So we know that maybe... This parasite changed what humans wanted to eat to benefit the parasite to eat more RC cells. You see where I'm going with this? Now the next thing we need to really look at is also the breeding habits of humans and ghouls. We do know that if a creature is not structurally similar or genetically similar, two different animal or species cannot mate. It's not possible. It's like trying to mate a cat and a dog. You can't do that. That's not fucking possible unless you fuck with the DNA so much that just, yeah. So, the main reason here is, is that we do know, and it has been shown, that humans and ghouls can mate. Look at Eto's parents. It's a perfect example. So, we do know humans and ghouls can mate. That means that they're genetically similar. So, once again, it goes along with the lines of how ghouls are humans. Because they're genetically similar to where it is possible for them to mate. For instance, like wolves and dogs. Now, the next thing is, as well... 
that scares me is what if Eto, since she is a new species, we do know Eto is a new species because she is a pure half ghoul, half human, half ghoul. She's pure. She's not like a human that's just had an implanted Kakuho and has had their entire chemistry of their body changed because of that. It, it's a completely different ordeal. Eto is a pure half-blooded ghoul and human. So she's a new species, which makes her very different from everything else in the series. And now the next thing we need to really factor into this is that there, it is a possibility that Eto is sterile. Now, you're probably thinking like, whoa, whoa, what? The reason why I'm saying this is, is because let's use an actual example of this, like a donkey and a horse and a mule. When a mule is born, we do know a mule cannot mate. It's sterile because of its parents with the crossbreeding. So, since we do know crossbreeding, even though the structurally or genetically those two creatures that made the mule are very similar, it made it to where the mule couldn't have children. It could not mate. It was sterile. So, there is a possibility, since human and ghoul mated and made Eto, Eto might be sterile to where she can't have children or carry on the bloodline of her type of race. For instance, the new type of species, which is half ghoul, half human. Now, I have talked about this before, and I went a lot in depth into that, and we do know since Eto is like a new being of her species, she could be considered God, or the Adam or Eve of her species, which there's been a lot of biblical symbolism very recently, but also Eto is different in so many ways just compared to how other ghouls are, or humans, because there has been signs or hints that Eto can eat human food. She ate an apple, and she also likes curry. It's been said in the manga series, since we do know Eto is a pure half-human, half-ghoul, there is a possibility that she might have evolved past the parasites which live inside of her, which is the RC cells. And since now she is a perfect mixture between these two different species, it makes it to where her cognate might have went through some form of evolution as well, which is sentient RC cells. As we have recently seen in the manga, Noro is the biggest mystery, one of the biggest things going on right now. Noro is a detachable Kagane that is connected to Eto. Now, we do know that Eto can make more Noros by inserting more of her Kagane or Noros inside of this ghoul and turning them into another one of her puppets. The big thing is, does this mean that Noro is, in fact, another person at one point in time? Or did Eto actually structurally make Noro, and does he have his own mind and will? Because if RC cells or a cognate can have its own will, it's sentient, that means that we have a bigger problem here. It's not just ghouls or humans we need to worry about. There's a bigger threat. As we know, as I've been talking about, RC cells are being implied to be parasites that have changed the very foundation of what humans love to eat. And if the parasites come on the outside and are now growing sentient, we have a bigger issue right now. The bigger issue is that if this parasite has learned to have intelligence, think about the consequences. So... That is one of the main points to discuss right now. So, the main topics to do a brief overview. We found out that ghouls, as we know, they are from humans. They're evolved humans. They have to be genetically similar to be able to even mate, which Eto is a perfect example. We know Eto is a, a new species, which has been proven time and time again. And then also, RC cells are parasites because of how they've changed the genetic structure of humans. And it also forced humans to go through an evolution of forming a Kakuho. Okay, so the next points to talk about is the Kakuja. The Kakuja is the next point that is going to probably intrigue all of you. As we know, a Kakuja is formed when a ghoul decides to cannibalize its own species, for instance, other ghouls. When a ghoul gets a lot of RC cells, for instance, a massive amount of RC cells inside of it, the ghoul, or the Kakuho, goes through a mutation, which turns into a Kakuja that covers the entire body. For instance, Centipede from Kaneki. Now, factoring that in, we know that RC cells do mutate, because look what it has done to 
the human body. It's mutated the human body to where it has changed, for instance, the structure of what humans love to feast on, or how the brain probably works compared to how normal humans are, what they like to eat, and then also how humans now have the cocoa. We do know RC cells cause genetic mutations. And then, on top of this, we do know since there is stuff like this, it makes sense that having a massive amount of RC cells in one point would mutate something and turn it into a different form of cognate, which is a cockroach. Because, as we know, a massive amount of RC cells equal ROS in human beings, which kill them. So that's kind of what's going on with a cockroach. A cockroach is literally ROS disease. That is what a cockroach is. A ghoul has developed ROS disease willingly or been force fed one or the other but still a, a ghoul has formed ROS disease but has learned some way to control it which explains the behavior of some form of Kakuja users as we know half Kakuja someone like Kaneki for instance he's crazy he, he's straight up fucking crazy the way he talks the way he acts he's insane which goes along with ROS disease. As we know, ROS disease affects the mind of a human to where the mind just shuts down, they revert back to like they're a child, and also different things shut down to where they, they're not themselves anymore. And that's kind of what a Kakuja does. It changes how they act. So who's to say that the RC cells are not affecting the human brain? Okay, so now that I've covered the Kakuja. The next and last point I want to discuss is coffee. Now, the biggest mystery about Tokyo Ghoul, besides what I just covered, is the coffee factor, because it's one thing that just stands out among everything else. Out of all the things in the world that, you know, ghouls can't eat and what they can eat, it's weird how they can drink coffee and it's fine. What exactly is causing it to where ghouls can consume coffee. Now, we do know that ghouls cannot live off of coffee. They need to eat meat. They have to eat meat. But the coffee kind of pushes aside the factor of, oh, we need to eat this moment. So it kind of settles the hunger for just a little bit. It's like, let's say, you are eating a big bowl of ice cream. And now, it's not very nutritional, but it kind of puts the hunger away for just a couple hours to where you don't need to eat anything at this moment, like a big healthy meal. That's kind of what coffee does. It pushes aside your hunger for a, for the time being, but you cannot survive off of it because the RC cells want to feast. They want more RC cells. Now, as we know, coffee actually has effects on the human body. This is actually a proven study in humans. Coffee actually messes with the brain, it messes with your blood pressure, it messes with all sorts of things with your body, and it also has been proven and linked that coffee can stop diseases in the body. For instance, oral type cancers, it can stop throat cancer to mouth cancer. Coffee also can cause it to where your brain could be affected to where you don't always fall asleep as often or where if you're not used to coffee, if you drink coffee, it keeps you awake and it blocks receptors in your brain to where you don't get as drowsy. So it does affect your brain. And then other things too, it increases the blood pressure of your body. Now, high blood pressure from coffee, as we know, causes it to where the blood doesn't circulate as well. It slows down the blood circulation. It takes a lot more effort for the heart to pump that blood. Now, as I've already said, what is in blood in humans or ghouls? RC cells, which is the parasite. So with coffee, I feel like it probably slows down this, uh, the cycle of RC cells inside of the ghoul or human body. It slows it down to where it doesn't go for your heart and reaches your brain and kind of messes with you, but also it makes it to where it has like a chemical effect to RC cells where it might change them in some way. We do know that there is a thousand compounds inside of coffee and there's many reasons to suspect that coffee could mess with RC cells, a parasite, maybe change them in some way or kind of make it to where they're not as active as they should be. Now, if you did not know as well, you're probably asking, okay, so maybe drinking coffee caused that, but it does not explain how the coffee can taste well to ghouls. That actually makes a lot of sense as well. Coffee instantly enters your bloodstream soon as you drink it. Now, not as much as waiting till it digests and kind of turns into the different type of chemicals in your stomach and intestines and kind of goes for your body, but as soon as you put coffee into your mouth, the caffeine enters through the different lining of your mouth to your gum and all that, 
and enters your bloodstream. So caffeine instantly, as soon as it hits your tongue and mouth, it enters your bloodstream, which affects RC cells. So you get my point here. So as soon as coffee enters the tongue, it probably does some form of chemical reaction where the RC cells are turned off and then the human brain kicks into work and it's like, oh, I can actually drink this because, I mean, right now the RC cells are not doing their job. So that's about it. I think I've covered everything I need to. Hopefully I didn't miss nothing. Hopefully this explains a lot about ghoul biology to you and what it truly means at this point in the story. You all have a wonderful day or not wherever you live. Please be safe. Chibi out.